This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Today we're talking all about what to do if and when you get stopped in the street taking photos, be it by security or members of the public. It's one of those things that many people are a little bit afraid of because they're not sure what they should do if they get stopped. Today, I wanna to put all that to bed and I wanna share with you my thoughts on what you should do and also just show you that it's not as bad or as often as you think. Now, I'm not gonna do all this at home because I've done quite a few videos at home. Instead, I'm gonna share with you one of my favorite parts of London that I go to for sunsets or just to escape the kind of busyness of the city while still being in the city. So, let's go. Whenever we head out into a public place, we run the risk of getting stopped doing photography. We can get stopped by members of the public or we can get stopped by security guards. Now, for some people, this is not an issue. However, for many, this is a big enough fear that it literally stops them from going out and taking photos in an urban environment. And in this video, I wanna break that whole myth down. I wanna give you back the confidence to go out and take some photos in a public place. And if you do get stopped, or when you do get stopped, you know exactly what to say, how to behave, and at the end of the day, you're not doing anything wrong. So, go out, well, watch this video first, then go out and take some photos. And for this video, we're actually in one of my favorite parts of London that I've never shown, to you before on this channel. Specifically, we are at the sort of Excel Marina, just between the Excel Exhibition Center, which is to my left, and the Emirates um, Cable Car, which is to my right. The reason I love this place is because when you come here for sunsets, you will have the most amazing sunsets because the sun will set behind the city. Furthermore, if you go onto the little bridge that crosses this bit of water, you are directly in line with London City Airport. Therefore, you can get some wicked photos of the planes and stuff. To me, whenever I come to this place and I see the planes coming in and out, see the city, nice sunset and all that kind of stuff, it always makes me want to travel. Don't know why, just coming here always makes me feel like, yeah, I'm gonna get on the plane, go somewhere nice. But anyway, I'll show you this particular area. I'll show you some of the photos from this area. Um, and yeah, if you're in London, if you live in London, if you're visiting London, I do highly recommend coming here for sunset. Any time of the year is good, uh, but autumn, spring will give you the better ones. But yeah, right, let's get back to the uh, point of the video. Now, I feel like I have to say this, obviously this is not legal advice, I'm not giving you any legal advice, I have to say it for obvious reasons, but also it's common sense because I am in the UK, you know, here the laws around photography in public are very relaxed. If you go somewhere else, the laws might be different. So my best suggestion to you is just to research about where you are and where you're going because the laws surrounding street photography and photography in public will differ. So for example, here in the UK and I think in the US as well, it is generally quite relaxed. However, in January, for example, I'm going to Dubai and there photography in public is, uh, well, it can land you with a fine actually. So I have to do my own research before I go there. But yeah, just do your due diligence um, before you go to shoot someone new with regards to what you can and can't do. And this is not just so that you don't end up getting a large fine for doing street photography, but it's more just to give yourself peace of mind because if you know that legally you can walk around and take photos in a public place, you will feel a lot more confident compared to if you're always second guessing yourself about whether you really should be taking photos here or not. Now let's talk about ethics. Why ethics in this particular video? Because your ethical code, so to speak, will determine how you will react when you get stopped. I can only speak for myself here. However, my ethical beliefs are that I should never impact someone in a negative way with this particular camera. Therefore, I approach other people with respect, empathy, um, and, under and understanding that not everyone understands photographers because it's still quite a niche thing that we do. 
So, I would never point my camera at anyone who would feel bullied, embarrassed, or ashamed that someone has taken their photo for whatever reason. I'll never point my camera at anyone who can't defend themselves. I'll never point my camera at kids or anyone who is, let's say, I don't know, young, right, unless they're a silhouette. And ultimately, I will never point my camera at anyone if it makes them look bad or puts them in an embarrassing position. Because at the end of the day, if I take a photo that makes someone else look bad, then I have failed as a photographer and as a person. With this ethical code, I can now approach people in a different way compared to, let's say, if I was an ego-driven photographer who thought it's my God-given right to take other people's photos. I mean, chances are, if you're one of those people, you're probably not watching this video or following this channel, thankfully. All right, so behind me is the bridge that you will use to go up to have the view of the city. Um, now, before going into specific use cases of getting stopped, let me just give you a mantra, is that a mantra? Um, let me just give you this thought, right, to take forwards. And without getting too philosophical for this channel, right, but life is not what happens to you, it's how you react to what happens to you. So if you get stopped by security, by people, whoever, for taking their photo, or for just taking photos in general, just remember that the outcome of that interaction is in your hands. You don't control who stops you, but you definitely control how you react. So from this point onwards, always react with positivity, with a smile, with kindness, with respect, and with empathy, even if the other person is rude, because that will take you so much further than being offended, being annoyed, being inconvenienced. Even though you are probably inconvenienced and maybe a little bit nervous, but if you react positively, if you react with a smile, the outcome of the interaction, whatever happens, will always be positive. It will never be negative. Alright, so, as you can see we're on the bridge now, amazing sunset behind me, and this is a particular spot where you can come, get a longer lens, maybe like a 70-200, something that will be perfect here, get some amazing cityscapes. You can go wide as well, um, but I think this definitely works better with a telephoto lens. Obviously the runway is just over there, just behind me, um, best thing to do is to check the schedule of the London City Airport because it's not as frequent to see when the planes are coming in and out because they're quite low and yeah you can get a pretty cool photo. So let's get started with what to do if you get stopped by a member of the public, a normal person who happened to walk through your frame and you took their photo. So as I mentioned before first of all start with empathy and start with just being 100% honest right. If you were taking a photo just say Yes, I'm a street photographer in London, in whatever city. Um, I walk around and take photos of the city. I really liked your hat, I really liked your coat. Give them a compliment because that goes very far. And I thought you'll make, uh, I thought you'll make a fantastic subject for this photo. Show them the photo, show them, let's say, your Instagram profile or your website, just to show them that you're not like, you know, some weirdo. And honestly, 99.9% .9 of the time, people will be absolutely cool with it, they'll be happy that you took their photo and as an extra bonus give them, uh, ask for their email and say that you'll send them a copy of the photo. Now if the photo is good everyone will be like yeah for sure I'll definitely take that. Um, if the photo is bad, if they look ugly in it, if they don't like it, just delete it. Not worth ruining someone's day. So yeah, if you get stopped by a member of the public, nothing to be worried about. Be honest, be open, tell them what you're doing, tell them who you are offer them to send them the photo and that's all you need. Okay, sunset is pretty much done on my way back down. Um, when you do come here, especially in the winter, do dress up warm because this whole area is really exposed. So even though it might be fairly warm in town, when you come here, oh, the temperature does drop quite a lot. So yeah, bring a warm coat if you plan on spending any sort of time here. Otherwise, you just won't enjoy it if you're freezing. I should have taken my own advice. The sun has, as you can see, set. 
I'm a bit cold. Um, I left my coat at home because I thought it's not going to be as bad today, but it's, uh, well, I've got a runny nose, so I'm going somewhere warm to carry on this video. At this point, I want to say a huge thank you to today's video sponsor, which is Squarespace. Now, I have mentioned in this video that if you do get stopped or when you do get stopped by a member of the public asking you why you're taking that photo, that showing them your social media uh, profile or some kind of web presence with your body of work will put that person at ease knowing that you are a legit photographer. And there is nothing as professional as having your own website and your own online portfolio. Social media is great, but everyone's got that, but not everyone has a website. So you get stopped, you're like, yeah, here's my website, show them your portfolio, show them your about me section, and even, you know, send them the link to your website so they can go and check it out further. And honestly, if you do that, most people, probably all people, will be absolutely fine with uh, you taking their photo and they can get hold of you later down the line if they want some more photos because if it's a good photo chances are people will be like that guy took my photo a little while ago he was actually all right let me send him a message got on your website send a message and off you go with that in mind i do highly recommend squarespace because they will just simplify the whole process from registering your first domain to building your first website and then sharing that website with everyone else if you are ready to start your own online portfolio, then do click the link in the description to get 10% off your first purchase and a free trial. Again, thank you so much for watching this bit of the video. Okay, we've escaped the cold. We are now in the Emirates airline cable car, which is wicked. I love using this thing because you get an amazing view of London that I'll show you in a minute. As you can see behind me, right there, some really nice purple skies behind the, uh, in front of the, behind the airport. So yeah, if you ever do come here, you can use the cable car to then go back towards North Greenwich, where you can get the tube back into central London. It's a very quick way to get back into town. So what happens if you get stopped by a security guard? There are two ways to go about it. So first of all, make sure that you are in a public place. If you're taking photos in a shopping centre or in a anywhere that's indoors, to be honest with you, you don't really have a leg to stand on. If you're somewhere where you definitely shouldn't be, you definitely don't have a leg to stand on. If you happen, if you happen to find yourself in a public right of way, so in London, for example, you've got Canary Wharf, you've got uh, Covent Garden. Those areas are privately owned, but they are public rights of way. So, you know, people can come in and out of the plane as they please. The way you react depends on two scenarios. The first one is a very polite security guard. And the second one is a very rude, um, very, let's say, intimidating security guard. The polite security guard will always come up to you, they'll smile, they'll say hello, they'll ask you how your day's doing, and they'll just say, look, do you mind me asking why you're taking photos here? In that particular scenario, I would always say, oh yeah, I'm just visiting town, I'm doing photography as a hobby, I've been told to come here and to take photos around here because it's meant to be, so my arm's going dead, it's meant to be a very nice place. I would then follow that up with um, asking the security guard if he actually recommends anyone in particular to go and photograph. And what that actually does is, well, first of all, it strokes their ego a little bit because someone has actually asked them for their opinion and people love to you know, tell others where they think is good to go. But also, it's, based, it's told the security guard that you're not really there doing anything weird or dodgy because if you were, you probably wouldn't be asking them for their opinion on where to go. Keep a positive attitude, keep smiling and just politely explain what you're doing. Realistically, in 99.9% .9 of cases, they will say, okay, carry on, just keep in mind, don't take photos of the doors or the cameras or anything like that. And they'll use some common sense. In that case, all is good, you carry on as you were. However, sometimes you'll have security guards which are a pain. They have a power, bit of a power trip, and I've heard it before where they come up to you, they're very rude from the outgo, outgo, outset. They wouldn't even say hello to you, they wouldn't ask you anything, they'll just come up to you and be like, where's your permit, you shouldn't be here. And they try and use these sort of bully tactics to effectively, I don't know why, um, but they try to. Now, in that case, it's very easy 
to reply with the same attitude. It's very easy to get so frustrated and angry. I mean, how dare you come up to me and be so rude? However, you need to be extra nice. You need to be extra polite, extra smiley, and extra friendly. Because as if you react in a negative, arrogant way, or rude way, or you're offended, or you're annoyed that that person's rude to you, it's only gonna aggravate them even more. I would say explain to them what you're doing in the same way that you've explained to the first security guard. Be very open, very polite. Um, if they are sort of still pushing to get you out and they say you shouldn't be taking photos here, can you please leave? Unless there's some specific reason why you can't, you have one in a million lighting condition or, you, or something else is happening, right? I would just leave because it's not worth ruining your day, ruining anyone else's day. Um, it's just not worth it. Legally, they can't do anything. They can't take your photos, they can't look at your camera. Legally, they have absolutely no ground to do anything. However, every time I've had an altercation or a negative one, not many, but every time I had, um, I didn't walk away happy, let's put it this way. I didn't walk away and have a very positive rest of the day. So, if that happens, just, you know what, well, you know what, well, walk away, it's not worth it. Now it's all well and good me telling you how to behave and what to do when you get stopped. However, how often do I get stopped? Because, you know, if you get stopped every 10 minutes, then it doesn't really matter how good, you know, you are at talking yourself out of things. You'll just get annoying very quickly. So this will definitely put everyone at ease or anyone who's still not at ease will definitely be at ease. So I do this a lot. I do this full time. I'm in London, what, three, four times a week taking photos. I've been doing it for numerous years. In total, by members of the public, I've had two negative encounters. When I say negative, the people were just a little bit rude um, and they didn't even give me a chance to explain what I was doing. They just walked off. However, I had hundreds, and I mean hundreds of positive experiences, thumbs ups, peace signs, waves, people coming up saying, oh, can I have a look at the photos? Oh, wow, can you send it to me? That's amazing. What's your name? We got chatting. Honestly, every time I think of an interaction I've had with a member of the public, it has been positive. So do you have anything to worry about? Short answer is no. In terms of security guards, obviously I do get stopped quite a lot more than the average person because I just shoot in places which are usually private. So Canary Wharf, more London, etc., etc. And because I don't have any kind of issues with you know, uh, blending in and I'll just take photos as an as and when I want, security do come up to me a little bit more than usual. However, given the quantity that I shoot in, I would typically have one security encounter every month. And if you do the maths with regards to how often I go out, that's still not a lot. And out of those encounters, I would say about 80% are positive with regards to the security guard saying, yeah, carry on, just watch out for the cameras and the entrances and off you go. And the other 20%, the security is like, oh no, you have to you know, put your camera away and leave type of thing. But again, I can honestly count those scenarios probably on one hand. Finally, let's wrap this video up with a quick word on confidence. You see, it's important what you say. However, it's even more important of how you say it when you do eventually get stopped. Because it doesn't matter what you tell someone, but if they can sense through your body language, through your tone of voice, through your eye contact, that you're nervous, they're not automatically gonna assume, oh, that person's nervous because they've never been stopped before. They'll just think, why is that person nervous? What are they doing that they maybe shouldn't be doing to make them nervous? Now, again, unfortunately, there's no preset I can give you for confidence. It's just something that takes a long time to build up. The way you build it up is just by going out, shooting as much as possible, getting stopped, you know, replying to people, having a conversation with people, and over time you build that confidence up to the point where anyone can stop you and you're not worried. You know, it's part getting stopped is like the same as taking a photo for you. So just keep that in mind. Don't put much, too much pressure on yourself, but just know that the more you do it, the more confident you become, and then everything just becomes easier. All right, that is everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something useful out of it, or at the very least, you found a new place in London that you can go and get some wicked sunset. 
photos. If you have enjoyed it, do like it below. If you have any thoughts or comments on this, please leave them below as well. And that's it. Thank you ever so much. Hope you have a good day and I'll speak to you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.